Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Tech Tutor. Today we're going to talk about the Netflix Eureka framework. So what this framework does is it helps you manage your client and server instances of Eureka. So your clients are basically going to be your microservices. And Eureka helps with dynamic service discovery. So it allows you to register these services with the server and you can also have multiple Eureka servers. So that's another thing. We won't really get into that in today's video, but uh, there is examples of that and I'll show you the documentation as well. So Eureka, what it helps you do is it helps you streamline the management of these services. Uh, it does that dynamic registration I was talking about, which helps you so that you don't necessarily have to know about all the different IP addresses or ports for the services. Eureka will automatically handle that. It can help with low balancing and also with the resilience of your system. So in general, it's just gonna help you and you can read on more of the features if you want, or I can try to make a video on that in the future if you want as well. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. So on this first page I'm showing you, which is just Spring Initializer, one of my favorite tools to use, I'm gonna show you how simple it is. So for your server instance, you're just going to add the Eureka server dependency. Uh, today we'll use Java 17. I'm not going to use uh, Gradle. I'm going to use Maven, so you'll switch out to Maven, and then 3.11 for Spring Boot is just fine. So when you're ready, you'll click Generate. It's going to generate a zip file. I already have one, and we'll dive into that shortly. For your clients, you're going to, once again, use Maven. Then for this one, I am going to use Spring Web because I do want to be able to just easily spin this up as an instance to uh, hit it with Postman if I wanted to so I could see each individual instance. You will need the Eureka Discovery Client so that way these microservices can register back in with the server. And then uh, I'm going to put OpenFame in at least one of these projects. Uh, you don't need it in both. But for today's showcase, I'm going to put it into one. Uh, the reason being is I'm going to use a Fang client and show you just how easy it is to hit one service to another because of the Eureka server and how the clients register with it. Uh, so you can put OpenFane into both your projects, but the source code that I'm going to upload to GitHub that you can use later on will only have it in one. Uh, it's up to you if you want to have it in both. But here is the example, and if you want to put it in both, it would work for both. So you could generate a client here, and then you could call another one like client one, client two, and that would be just fine. Uh, I'm going to again use 17 so click generate click uh, that zip that gets created you unzip it and you can open it in IntelliJ so now that I've introduced you to that let's go ahead and dive into the code and I'll show you just how simple this is all right so now let's take a look at that Eureka server that was generated using spring initializer so as you can see in here it's a pretty slim POM file uh, the main important artifact that is included here because I showed you in the other screen uh, what dependency you wanted, you want that Netflix Eureka server dependency. Otherwise, it's going to also include the dependency management for Spring Framework uh, Cloud. This is because the Eureka server is a cloud framework. So as you can see here, there's no version listed here. It pulls that dependency from uh, this dependency management. So the other thing down here is you can see the Spring Boot Maven plugin. It's pretty standard for your uh, Spring Boot project. So moving on. Application YAML. This is all you need in this server for your very basic configuration. Uh, typically, the Eureka server runs on 8761, so you want to set the port to 8761. And I've also included a link here for how I ended up with this configuration. You can see that uh, in my YAML file, it's Eureka client register with Eureka false and fetch registry is false. Uh, we don't want this server to try to register with itself. It'll still run, it'll just throw some errors. Uh, but we don't really want to register with itself. So in this case, this is the example, and I'll also go to this documentation. You can see where they suggest this as well. Now, over in the server application, I also put another documentation link showing that you do need the enable Eureka server annotation. And so that is the bare minimum here for this server. And if we go ahead and look at the documentation here, you can see that uh, the properties that I had set are for the standalone mode. As I mentioned before, you can have multiple servers and they can register with each other. We won't do that for this video, but in the standalone mode where you only have one server, here they're showing you that you want that port to be 8761. Uh, you can set your host name and things like that. So here you could potentially inject properties. Uh, I just simplified it in mine. So as you can see here, um, 
I don't have that because all we're good with all the defaults. So it will actually default to the right properties for that. Um, here, I, I take that back. This is really for the client actually, uh, which you'll see in the client code. But here's the part where I was talking about where you don't want it to register uh, the server. So you're gonna set these two values to false. Again, since this is actually your default is localhost, that's really why we get away with not having to set any these other values. So moving on, I will go ahead and run this project. And also, I guess real quick, let me show you the documentation uh, about enable Eureka. So we'll go there real quick. And here you can just see that it shows you the minimal example. They're actually doing a little extra where they have this dot web is true dot run args. But for now, again, our basic example, you don't need that. You do need this enab enable your enable Eureka server for it to work properly. Otherwise it will not work. So you can right click on this service uh, <clears throat> server application class and just click run. And as it runs here in a moment, you will see that it will tell you it starts up on the port. So we're going to wait for that. All right, updating port to 8761. It has started on that port. Now let's go back over to the browser and look at 8761. So now here you can see the server is running. It's got some basic information. It's tracking different things. And also some general information about uh, the server that is running. So it's telling you about the number of CPUs and memory, uptime, things like that. You can see there's no instances registered with Eureka. That's because we're not running our client instances yet. So once we run those, uh, you will see those get populated here. So let's move on to the client instances. So as I had mentioned earlier for Spring Initializer as well, you're just gonna generate another <clears throat> project. And in this project, I told you to use the client and then uh, Spring Boot Starter Web, I suggested. So again, this particular project right here, doesn't have the Thane client because I didn't particularly want to use it for this example. We'll get to that in a moment. So these two, because I wanted the web uh, to be there so that way I could potentially hit uh, this server if I wanted to. I'm pretty sure you don't actually even need that uh, if you're not going to actually hit it with an external like Postman or anything like that. Uh, but for this example, I have it running. So I set my server port to 8081. Uh, <clears throat> you don't necessarily have to, as long as you make sure that they can't collide because I'm running all this on localhost, they could collide. But like if you were running it on multiple instances in a network and they aren't going to have all you know local host you wouldn't necessarily have to make sure they're on different ports but the one important thing here is to know what your spring application name is so spring cloud eureka first client this is important and you also do need to tell it where your eureka server is so our eureka server is running on localhost 8761 slash eureka so here i'm also setting up a controller and this controller is what i'm going to hit using my fan client in my second microservice. So this is going to show you how the second microservice can utilize the Eureka server to not know that this is running on uh, 8081 and localhost. It can actually just use the name of the application to hit this API as well as knowing what the uh, API path is. So we'll go ahead and run this service now. All right, now that is running on 8081, let's go back and check in with the server. So I'll refresh this page. And now you can see Spring Cloud Eureka first client is running. It has registered with this server and you can see it's running on 8081. And it says that its status is up this is because it's doing that health check where it checks in. Okay, one more service, which is our second client. So again, here is what the palm looks like. This one has web, Eureka client and open fade. So I added open Fane to this one because I want to use Fane to hit the second, sorry. <clears throat> I want to use Fane to hit the first client from the second client. And so let's go to the application YAML. I'm going to run this one on 8080 because as I said earlier, you don't want to run it on the same port as the other uh, servers services running because otherwise they'll collide. But if you had them on different instances and different, uh, where the, it won't be running on localhost, this would be fine. But you do need to, Again, set your application name so that way you can register with Eureka. So this one I'm calling Spring Cloud Eureka, second client. 
and then I'm telling it where Eureka is. Again, same thing as before. Uh, I'm going to enable fan clients in the application class so that way I can utilize the fan clients. I have another video on fan clients if you want to see a little bit more detailed view of fan clients, a little bit extra configuration. But when you're using Eureka, it's actually really simple um, in, unless you're you know getting into some authentication, other things, then you'll have more advanced uh, pieces. But for now, like with what we have, very basic, you'll see just how easy it is. So I now have this test controller. This test controller I set up is because I'm going to show you in Postman how I'm going to hit this service. This service will make a call to the first client and then it will show the response in Postman. So this API in the second service is under second slash test. It's now going to use a fan client I created called greeting client and greeting client will call the test API. <clears throat> so second test calls greeting client dot test, which is over here, and then it's going to call first test, which is the API that I put in the first microservice called first client, and it will take the response from that service and push it back through the test controller here all the way back up to Postman. So the key thing I wanted to show you here is all you gotta do to configure this fan client is put the name of the service, so the spring application name. So this one's called second client, the other one was called first client. So you're telling it the name of the service so that way Eureka knows what it is. And then it knows that that's the service and then you just gotta give it the API path. So then first test. So now I'm gonna go ahead, right click and run this one as well. All right, and you see this is now running on 8080. So let's go ahead, look at Firefox one more time, refresh this page again. All right, so you can see that second client and first client is up and running. This uh, error message is just kind of a warning. It's not actually impacting anything we have running here. I was reading it for a moment ago, but yeah, it's not an issue. Everything is running properly. So as you can see, here, the first client's running on 8081, as we said, the second one is on 8080. And now the final test, which is that we're going to open up Postman and make a call to our second client. So this second client, we're gonna make a call to this test controller. So here we go, 8080 second test, it's a get call. So when I call it, you'll now see that the response was first client response, which is what we wanted. It's got a 200, which you can't see because it's hidden behind here. So yeah, there's that 200. I'll move it over so you can see it. All right, and then we'll go back to the first client. So you can see first client response, and I told it to give HTTP status okay. So that shows you just how easy it was. It was a very, very minimal setup. Obviously, you can get into more complex um, configuration if you needed something that had more authentication or other uh, reliability, scalability, you know, it load balances, things like that. But this is just to get you an intro into Netflix Eureka framework, show you how easy it is and how much minimal code you really need. Uh, I know that I didn't actually like code it live in front of you, but I wanted just to go ahead and step through the code, show you that most of it actually was generated for me. The only thing, the palm was generated from uh, Spring Initializer. The only thing you really see me create was in this first client. I created this application YAML, very minimal code. I created this uh, test controller in the uh, second client. What I did was I created this test controller, the fan client. Uh, I added this one annotation to enable fan clients. Again, another uh, application YAML, minimal code. And like I said before, this POM file was generated by Spring Initializer. And lastly, just to review it one more time, in the server, very minimal code as well. You need that enable Eureka server annotation. Uh, again, this minimal application YAML configuration. And once again, a POM file generated by Spring Initializer. So I hope that this really helped you to see how easy it is to go ahead and spin this up to kind of show you a proof of concept, how you could kind of iterate on this and. You could read the documentation because I do have the links to the documentation if you want to see more complex setups that you can go ahead and configure. And this shows you just how easy it is to use the service discovery that Netflix Eureka Framework has provided you. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.